Yeah, yeah, like everybody likes to point at Witcher 3 nowadays, and I, I think I think it's maybe a bit overused, but still equally appropriate. Witcher 3 is kind of the perfect example of how to handle your game well. But it might also be kind of one of those where like lightning strikes twice. You can't do that all the time. So we gotta flip a an orange alpha and keep that active. Don't know how we'll be able to do that, but that's okay. Um, yeah, it's blue omega blue. Um, but like Witcher 3 was this like really hyped up game. And honestly, like Witcher 3 is good because of its writing and like a lot of its mechanics. I actually was not a really big fan of its, uh, I was not actually a big fan of its combat, which is why I never finished it. Um, but I, I have to compliment them on, on actually making like a really good game. And then when it came to the DLC, they're like, oh yeah, here's like uh, this ridiculously, here's here's this ridiculously long expansion effectively that serves as a great accompaniment to the main game. And I'm like, yep, nope, keep, keep doing that. I wish more companies would do that. Instead of just rushing it out and doing horrible things like Mass Effect Andromeda. God damn! If Mass Effect Andromeda had had been even half as good as Witcher, that would have been wonderful. Instead, it just felt like it was kind of this weird recycled. Felt like a uh, weak old oatmeal. Like, yeah, I guess you kind of know it's the right thing, the same thing, but it's inherently a completely different product. Okay, so this guy's strong against physical. Oh, but he's not actually uh, immune to it, so I'm just gonna wail on this guy. Oh. I'll take a Mithras. I've never played Andromeda. Why was it so bad? Um, it was just broken. Like, a lot of the animations were bad. The writing was bad. There were... It's like, it's hard to describe why Mass Effect, Mass Effect Andromeda was bad in like a short couple of sentences. It just didn't feel good through and through. None of the characters were immediately likable and it, it felt like they were trying too hard uh, to be... It, it felt like it was trying really hard to be Mass Effect, but without any of the... Uh, without any of the pedigree. I, I guess an easy example would be... Have you ever seen those... Uh, those cartoons? Of like, let's say How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, how about the Disney cartoons? Like, after the uh, oh, he is he is confused or whatever. Like after Disney put out their like successful movies, they'd always have a accompanying cartoon that always felt kind of like weird and vapid and empty. Might have been good on its own right, but in comparison to the real thing, generally they were kind of bad. And. And like, yeah, I guess I guess you can kind of enjoy it, but it's just it's just not the same. That is the closest I can come to describing um, Mass Effect Andromeda, with the exception of occasionally one of the one of the characters would go like wildly off model and teleport off screen, and then just not come back. Okay, do we know what she's weak to yet? We haven't tried guns, lightning. We haven't tried a lot of stuff. Well, I'm just going to keep wailing on these guys. So what about Ark's Early Access DLC? I have a harder time with, uh... Oh. Show me your power. Oh. Well, all out attack. Uh... I have a harder time with indie games and smaller products. I think Ark is kind of a perfect example of... Oh, it's because she has a status effect. Well, that's unfortunate. Did we actually find what why she was uh No, we don't actually know what she's weak to. Oh, 
Okay. Um, but yeah, it's harder with indie games because I'm more than willing to forgive a lot from an indie game made by a much smaller team with much, much more constrictive budgets. Okay, gunfire and wind. Weak to nuclear. Well, we are getting some of our uh, SP back, so I might as well actually abuse these guys' weakness here. Um, let's do Gorilla. No, my Gorilla. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to how to put it to words. I was actually okay with Ark's early access DLC, if only because it was this kind of fresh new thing that introduced a bunch of new dinosaurs and mechanics and stuff like that. It ultimately did not feel like it was worth the 20 bucks that they charged for it. I think it should have been 10. Uh, Ark is basically no, not an indie game. It is much more of an indie game than, say, Mass Effect Andromeda is, for example, or Destiny 2. And uh, even more so, like, Shadow of War. Like, I, I guess it's hard for me to be mad at a company uh, that already charges less than 60 bucks for a game that I can probably get more time out of uh, and fun. Like, I would definitely put it in the same same vein as Battle Chasers. It's a, it's a double-A game. Um, but since the base price is, you know, cheaper than what I would have to pay for a triple-A, it's easier for me to be forgiving. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, the path we came on has been closed off. The airlocks seem to have changed. Let's proceed with caution. Uh, so, is it totally ethical to do that sort of thing? No, I think it's exploitative and kind of scummy, uh, but I don't think it's as bad as some other games, like, you know, Minecraft selling maps and whatnot. Ark, $60, what do you mean? Oh, did they did they increase the price of Ark? Oh yeah, they did. Okay, well, I don't know. At the time, Ark was, uh, Ark was only 30 bucks. Uh, so I was a little bit more forgiving of it, but yeah, they cranked up the price for the full release. Ooh, I don't know about that. Let's see. So use Psychic. Alright. I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah, 60 bucks might be a little bit much for Ark. If it was still 30, I think I'd be more more forgiving. Because ah. yeah, I got Ark for 10 bucks. It was it was on sale for 30 when they released the early access DLC, which like I would prefer early access DLC to day one DLC. Uh, like, major day one DLC always just bothers me, because it's like, just put it in the game, come on. Don't, like, nickel and dime me for, like, a, a, a little bit of side content here. Okay, medium electric damage to all three. Oh, no, 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 no. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I will admit, after, after playing uh, Scorched Earth uh, with my friends, I kind of lost interest in... Uh, I lost interest in Ark just in general, just because it's not the kind of game for me. If it had better RPG mechanics, I think I would have been more interested. But as it stood, it was actually... Uh, <clears throat> just kind of boring, I guess. I like the idea of Ark, but the gameplay was never compelling enough to keep me interested. Okay. I have no idea if I'm doing this right. I don't know what I'm doing. That's okay. I'm just kind of, uh... I'm, I'm just kind of blanking on this one. Ark ran out of money halfway through, and so they needed the extra money. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd be willing to believe that. I... I... I guess it's kind of one of those where Ark is still being developed. I don't think they're done with it, so I'm a little bit more willing to forgive. Uh, then, I, here's a good example. Nefarious was the same, not Nefarious, freaking, uh, Necropolis. No, Nefarious is great. Uh, not for everybody, but Nefarious was amazing. Um, Necropolis was 30 bucks on release, and it had 10 levels of content, and they're like, yeah, we're gonna have all this new content, and 
Uh, and we're going to, you know, work really hard and make this, like, this wonderful game. And then the game came out and they did one update and then have abandoned it. That bothers me a hell of a lot more than, uh, than the, than the ARC people charging for early access DLC. That was actually good. Like, Scorched Earth was not bad DLC. The only thing bad about it was the price tag. Um, freaking Necropolis is, like, a giant scam. It is effectively, like, a baseline early access game. It bugged out so much. And yet, like, they never fixed any of it. Uh, it also bugs me that I, I knew a guy on the dev team. And I tried to, like, ask him about it and a couple other things, and he was just, like, completely stonewalled me. Um, but, like, I'm just so disappointed in harebrained schemes for for Necropolis. Nope, not gunfire. I don't know what she's weak to. Whatever, she's not weak to physical, so I'll just wail on her. What would have happened if No Man's Sky had done paid DLC after their amazing launch? If, if, uh, if Hello Games had charged for every update for No Man's Sky, I would have been furious. I would have just... just I would have joined the, uh, I would have joined the, uh, the train of people decrying it as the worst game ever. As it stands, No Man's Sky is actually kind of the paragon of early access done relatively well. The only thing they suck at is communication. Necropolis might get a massive update, but you doubt it. No, I got, I got, uh, tweets from the devs, uh, confirming that Necropolis is not being worked on. And probably, probably won't be worked on again. I mean, if you got those bad of reviews, chances are you're not going to be able to drag that out of the pit. Unless you, like, really, really feel like uh, putting money, your money where your mouth is. Or, I don't know, kind of the reverse, your mouth where the money is. But yeah, the fact that Hello Games has, has actually put out three fairly substantive patches. I mean, ultimately, like... Ultimately, uh, I would still say that No Man's Sky is kind of this vapid and em empty product. Um, but it's a vapid, empty project product that I rather enjoy. Uh, so it's easier for me to like it. To be fair, not updating it after massive negative reviews is okay. I don't agree, actually. Um, I mean, there are, there are differences, but like, for Necropolis, it was a game that could have been really good if they had reached in the comment. Uh, the combat. Like, if the combat had played much closer to uh, Dark Souls, as opposed to whatever kind of clunky nonsense that they actually had, it would have been an amazing game if they just added in a better endgame boss, or just taken him out entirely for, like, a much more interesting thing. Um, but, like, if you sell a product that is inherently incomplete, don't pass it off as complete. And then abandon it, saying, like, no, this is, this is what our vision was. Because that's a lie. Uh, that is, like, a damn dirty lie, and you know it. Like, I I, I was kind of decrying uh, Square Enix earlier for for Final Fantasy XV being kind of a mess, but, like, at the same time, they're actively trying to improve it, just like they improved uh, Final Fantasy XIV, which was a giant mess when it came out. Like, most people thought... Uh, Final Fantasy XIV was a, such a complete flop, it might kill Square Enix. And they might have been right about that, but Square Enix managed to kind of uh, push it through and make it work, and I gotta give them credit for that. That was good on them. If they wanted to, they could have offered free refunds for a couple months. Yeah, maybe. I'm trying to think of good examples. I don't got any. Alright, that's an Omega Orange door. I don't know if we actually found an Omega Orange switch. I might actually have to run through this again. I'd, uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, this is what we we're looking for. We're gonna have that flip. That's good. Let's see. Will I go back to Final Fantasy XV when the online DLC comes out? Maybe? It's hard to say. Okay, so we want to go back through this one. Uh, 
Ah, crap. I messed it up. Okay. What do I think about Cube World? Cube World is weird. It is kind of impossible for me to talk about Cube World. Um. Okay. Because Cube World ultimately was a neat product that came out way too early. Cube World did the same thing as No Man's Sky. Sort of. Uh, it came out well before it was, it was done. And kind of like how Hello Games worked, instead of actually uh, instead of actually fixing the problem, they just kind of shut down. Uh, heard something about the dev coming back. Oh yeah, I, Wally comes back every once in a while. He just doesn't actually release a proper update. Uh, but Cube World is this interesting product that had a lot of po potential. Still has a lot of potential. Uh, it just it needs years of development before Cube World will be good. Somewhere. Um, and the trick is with uh, with Cube World, if he hadn't sold it, if he had just released it as this this shitty demo, I think it would have been perfect. Because as it stands, people feel scammed by it. Uh, and I think that was a, that was a classic issue of the developer just not being able to. Um, to deal with the needs of his audience and getting pressured into doing something he didn't want to do and then panicking in the worst possible way by just giving up on the game. Well, maybe not in the game, but in having it as a product. Because, yeah, uh, for those of you that don't know, Cube World is still being worked on. Wally puts up, uh, Wally puts up uh, a fair bit of stuff every once in a while. It's just so rare and piecemeal that it's it's nothing. Ooh, we're finally reaching the end. That shit was easy. Uh, Skull, all you did was follow Joker. Um, so what do I think about Cube World? I don't think about Cube World. I I hope he finishes it soon, and I hope he damn better gives some really fancy thing to everybody that bought a copy of Cube World. Like something that just absolutely makes it worth it when it finally comes out. Which won't happen, but that's okay. Hmm. These are the parts we saw in the factory area. So this is where they're being used. But what are they? It's hard to tell just from looking. Come on, man. Dude, let's just leave the factory tour for later. We gotta focus on the treasure right now. Huh, it's rare to hear a skull say something sensible. I'm... Okay, here we are. So we got a little bit left before we go. Um, but the one thing I will give Cube World credit for is trying. It was like a single man product that was way, way too more than the guy could, uh, you know, like, the guy bit off way more than he could chew. Uh, but I gotta give him credit because, like, it does have a lot of potential. He just shouldn't have sold, he shouldn't have sold it. Um, but, I mean, that's just a si sign of an inexperienced developer trying to do their own PR and that's a terrible idea I should write something can't say how much I love the fact that they actually designed the dungeons for this game oh hell yeah I um I I never wanted to cover any of the persona games prior because the dungeons were so boring but they did a wonderful job with them and I really like it I mean admittedly at this point I'm playing uh battle chasers and it's kind of putting it to shame but whatever it's two man. You're right. Wally's wife does do the, uh, does do the, uh, artwork for the characters, but like that's still such a small team to make something that big. It's impressive, but I don't know. Anyway, we're probably gonna have voice acting up ahead, so I should probably get off topics. about the mental collapses that bothers me oh yeah you're right maybe he's hiding it we got this far wouldn't it be better to just squeeze the truth out of the guy after we change his heart that plan is fine by me let's send out the calling card and take his treasure then you can decide when we do so
Let's see. I can feel it. Anything around here? I, can see it. I don't want to touch it yet. Wait, robot. It. What? What is actually going on with this area? Do I like hop over the barrier or am I missing something? I can feel it. I am missing something. Maybe I got to climb up something somewhere here. No, treasure's out there. Oh, I'm supposed to lower this somehow. Maybe? I mean, it looks like there's a series of, like, sort of lifts. Do I, like, go underneath? No. What? Is there anything I can interact with here? PC suffered from no PR versus Hello Games too much PR. Well, PR actually means public relations. Uh, in Wally's case, he couldn't handle public relations. He couldn't. He could not handle the the uh, the needs of his fans and the desires and the the wants and whatnot. So he panicked and he just shut down. Um. Oh. Okay. This appears to be the center of the palace's distortion. Come on, let's send that calling card and find out. Uh, what that hazy shit is. Uh, oh, so we're done. We're actually done. Okay, well, that's super helpful. Yeah, I was confused. I was like, should I get closer to it? But no, we're, we're golden. Awesome. Makes my life easier. But yeah, if Cube World ever comes out, I will forgive him for all of his faults. It's just if Cube World comes out. Alright, well, let's head back to the side entrance. What's my guide say? I think my guide says, like, don't even... Yeah, spend some more days with people. What day, what day was today? The 4th. Yeah, so we're a day ahead of time, so we might actually just be able to do the rest of the palace. No, we got to do the calling card tomorrow. Shoot. Well, I might be able to manage or something. Did I go the wrong way? I went the wrong way. But yeah, you send the calling card and it changes the layout. Yep. I just... I am... I am a bit tired. Oh, hey! This is where we get to see Futaba in her various costumes. In a more reasonable outfit. I like the, uh... I like the outfit. Looks nice. Let's see what the other ones look like. Uh, let's see. So, Cyber Gear is what we've seen her in. Summer clothes. Okay. So, Tetris. No way. I th have we seen that? I think we've seen that. What about winter clothes? That looks like it would be really cold, but that's okay. Swimsuit. Oh, wait, no. We've already seen this, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Loungewear. Okay, so that's the stuff we've seen in, like, all those cutscenes. Uh... Yeah, seeing as we almost never get to see her, I figured I'd actually take a look at the maid uniform, really. Eh. I've never understood the, the desire for maid uniforms that people always seem to, like, go out of their way for. Oh, that's kind of adorable. I like the boots, actually. Those boots look warm. Uh, dance wear. Eh. Let's see. Dance wear. Shadow Ops uniform we've already seen. And Oron High. Which I assume is just going to be ultra boring. Plus, nice headphones. Yeah, let's put her back on Shadow Ops. Because everybody on Shadow Ops looks super cool. Let's get out of here. Turn to the real world. There's my next cosplay. What, her, her Christmas winter outfit? <laughs> Funny. Yes. Hey, hey. Uh, my, neck, my neck is stiff. 
I was considering stopping at like three hours, and here we are at six. Uh, All right, whatever. Well, a lot has happened along the way, but we're finally here. Huh? What happened? Uh, you know the whole kerfuffle between you and Mona? Do you really got to bring that up again? It's all good, because it was because of your fight that we met Haru after all. Thank you. I wouldn't be able to do this without your help. Now is not the time to thank us. The finishing touch still remains. The calling card, right? What do I need to do? Dude will decide when we send it. Once he does that, we'll meet up and discuss the details. I'll prepare myself for that. I'll leave it in your capable hand, Star. Now, then. This is Haru's first mission, and we're going after her father. Give word when you're ready. Well, uh... You know what, seeing as I got money for this. I want a massage. This is weird shit. Oh, would it be alright if I go in my maid outfit? I did quit the maid job, but seeing... But people can't find out a teacher is seeing your student for personal reasons. I can't get found out, you know. I hope you don't mind me dressing like this when I come help you. What does Sojiro think about us? How is this woman so strong? It feels like my body is being kneaded with iron rods. So, what do you think about the amount of force I'm using, Master? It is perfect. Right, I'm a professional at this after all. Huh, your body is pretty fit. What the heck do you do to get it like this? So, do you feel a bit lighter now? Oh, looks like it was pretty effective. Since you're refreshed now, you can probably do something else before the night ends. See you later. Uh, let's see. There we go. And no, the Oran High costume is not in relation to the Oran Host Club anime. It's in relation to a previous, uh... A previous Persona game? Maybe not a Persona game. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei game of some variety. Okay, anyway, that was weird shit, but, uh, we can go hang out with people. Can't really hang out with much of anyone. We can go hang out with Oya? Oh, uh, let's go to the Red Lake District anyway. Let's see. So we want to go to her. I'm just going to drop money on everybody. Okay. Uh, so we want to do an affinity reading. Let's go with uh, Ryuji. Because we've actually never maxed out Ryuji. I'm hemorrhaging money. Worth it though. But yeah, all of the uh, all of the cosmetic DLCs, except for the uh, seasonal ones and uh, kind of standard ones, are all in reference to various uh, Shin Megami Tensei games of some variety. Okay, yeah. thanks some guy for all the super chats. You're a boss. Okay, uh, so what do we do? So could go hang out with Ey, Soji Ro, or Oya. We're almost done with Oya. Let's go hang out with Oya. See if we can fin her up, finish her off. And the other thing, uh, my guide says uh, just work at the Shinjuku bar. I don't really care about that. Hey. <sighs> let's see. So let's just hang out with her. Sounds good to me. I apparently, well, apparently we're going to Ginya. I just got my bonus, so I'm going to get some of the more expensive sushi today. Come on, don't hold back. Order anything you want. Think of it as thanks for all the info you've given me. Plus, I like to eat normal food once in a while, too, you know. Uh, keep your spirits up. Heh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Let's make sure we get nice and energized for our next big mission. Okay, it's on me today. Knock yourself out. Alright, so we should probably figure out gifts. Wow, you ate a ton. Well, I guess that's normal for a high school kid. I'll just have you make it up with more scoops. I'll be counting on you. Well, then. well, I guess we should get going. Let's get some sushi to go and stop by Lala Chan's place. So what's all you want? Uh, she's on the second page. Hey, I didn't know you could buy this. Alright, oh, we got the sushi mug. All right, I'm giving you one as a gift. Now we'll each have a, one piece of a matching set. Okay, uh, what is Oya like? 
random junk. Fountain pen, we already gave her one. Mini cactus, I think I gave that away. I think I gave away the fan. I think I gave away, away the, oh. She doesn't like the, oh, she does like the digital camera. There we go. Oh. The digital camera might be awkward, what? Classical hits? Ah, a present, that's so nice of you. I'll take it, thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for today. I'll be counting on you for more info. Well. Hopefully that means we can finish off the relationship. Or, not the relationship. Uh, the social link with her tomorrow. Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Hey. Good morning. The deadline's almost here. Will we be fine? We have to send the calling card as soon as possible. We'll send it soon, right? Uh, I'm thinking about it. I think the camera is too intimate a gift to give to a non-girlfriend. Right. That seems really odd to me. I don't think cameras are a particularly uh, <laughs> intimate thing apart from the price, probably. People are just going to be yelling at me about that calling card. Bleh. Wander just giving out costly digital cameras out to his woman. Dude, I'm loaded. Now, everyone. now let's begin class. Do you understand what we went over last time? Well. Oh, free time. What could it be? Everyone make sure to study on your own while I go to the faculty office. Look at how she's just clutching her glasses. All right, so it's the same stuff. Let's read. Oh, can I, can I max out? Call me chief. Hell yeah. Chiefs are people who don't want much for themselves, but people expect much of them. I love the sound of the word chief. I'd like to be one someday. Okay, yeah, it's the same thing. So you finished reading, call me chief. Did you want me to call you chief now? I'm kidding. Did you learn more about chiefs and their big hearts? Even in the underworld, there's kindness. Mm -hmm. How many digital cameras does Shell have? She got one. I didn't give it to her, though. I did give her a laptop, though, which is about the same. 